the convergence of IT and telecommunications gave birth to the digital era. With the emergence of digital society, the world is getting more connected. Now, nearly everything is possible online, from commerce to healthcare and even financial services. People now enjoy appreciable levels of living because of these connections. Unfortunately, the connection is also expanding the playground for bad people, criminals and fraudsters. So what we are seeing is we are opening the door to welcome the customer in and getting the funds and then the back door is being opened to let out the gains of the industry. The Nigeria Interbank Settlement System, NIBS, notes that the increase in transaction processing, speed and available channels comes with an unavoidable side effect, more vectors for fraudulent activities. There was a NIBS statistics that mentioned it. the impact of fraud in terms of the percentage and the actual amount in value. It is running into billions. Of course, fraudulent activities are not new in the banking sector. In the past, criminals have cloned bank checks, fraudulently procured passbooks and impersonated bank customers, all in a bid to defraud customers. Fraud is almost an everyday thing. Uh, there are people that every day they think about how they can penetrate the banking system, the banking infrastructure, the payment infrastructure. It's a way of livelihood to them, so they do it all the time. And that's why we need to opt up our antis in terms of protecting you know, our technology infrastructure, our financial infrastructure, our payment infrastructure. We need to constantly you know, monitor it and put a lot of surveillance on all the various entities that participate in the ecosystem. To be honest, when you have technology, you will have fraud because obviously we've moved from face to face to behind a system. There are all sorts of psychosocial reasons for all criminal activities, but experts believe that greed and lifestyle are perhaps the highest driver that motivates perpetrators to commit fraud. Sometimes it has to do with morality of the people, some have said maybe it's the state of the economy and the financial challenge people are facing. Uh, but at the end of the day, you know, um, when specific people are given rights that gives them privileged access and they decide to betray the institution that they work for, then the only way around it is to have policies in place to quickly detect it and also to mitigate it as much as possible. Nowadays, the sheer number of people who have been victims of criminal attacks from fraudulent financial activities, including Ponzi schemes, online banking fraud and scams, is alarming. Reports indicate that this year alone, Thousands of people have seen savings swept away by an unprecedented wave of online banking fraud across the country. Victims have caught across different strata, old and young, male and female, rich and poor, ugly and fine. Indeed, everyone and anyone can be a victim of financial fraud. The biggest part, which really uh, is at the heart of it, is actual insider fraud. People always look at it from an external standpoint, thinking that, oh, you have uh, hackers, they've hacked into a system and all that. But from what we know and that are available to us, a situation where a staff that have access to privileged um, information and access uh, decides to go rogue, you know, and decides to feel they can get away 
by manipulating the system. We have seen um, internal collusion lead to fraud. <clears throat> I've seen external breaking lead to fraud. Uh, I don't think I have data to show that this is the percentage and 90% of it um, is internal. But clearly, um, in a market like Nigeria, where we are seeing institutions building solutions on a day-by-day -day basis, they are bound to be compromised. Yes, there are some instances where we have few bad eggs um, who yeah, will have let go or let loose of customers' information. No matter how much of technology we deploy to protect funds and protect digitization and protect digital payments as a whole, the last mile, the weakest link in the chain is that individual who is actually doing the transaction himself. It may be surprising to know that bank customers are not the only victims of fraud. Banks themselves have been victims many times. According to NIBS, fraud-related transactions reportedly cost Nigerian banks an average of 14 billion naira in losses annually as of 2020. Many within the banking sector, however, believe that the figures are understated. Bank customers have complained endlessly about unwarranted deductions from their accounts and sometimes outright clearance of funds from their accounts. I get charges like almost every, if one couple enters, they will remove charges. Ah, it's too much, honestly. It's too much. Do, um, if you use USSD card, USSD codes, I mean, they remove charges. Still remove charges from your bank also. And at the end of the month, they also remove charges again. It's not done. Uh, good thing you brought up the this topic. You know, this is really, really giving everybody a worry. You know, nobody is happy. If you transfer money in your account, you will have debit from the bank. You withdraw money, you will have debit from the bank. They will tell you, is it there is a, a maintenance charge, this charge, this charge, this charge. This is really, really uh, pissing everybody off. Because of the situation of the country now, is this supposed to be removing any money? They are using our money for trading. I come to understand that uh, they are in collaboration with the uh, CBN. Yes, because I, I, I learned that when they, those charges, those small, small money they remove from your account, then later they will go and share it with uh, CBN. Yes. Bank partners are not spared. In June this year, telecom giant MTN took 18 Nigerian banks to court over a 22.3 billion naira, that is $53.7 million mobile money fraud. According to the suit, dated May 30, MTN alleged that its recently licensed mobile money payment service bank, Momo, has suffered a fraudulent loss from its partner banks, a case of the rich also cry. All the banks should come together and discuss cyber fraud cyber security they should discuss it all the time awareness is very key that awareness not only does it pre prevent you know those that do not have the knowledge within the banking industries from you know getting the knowledge uh, it also helps in educating the banking public uh, majority of the frauds that are committed today are actually on impersonation let's not allow the public to lose confidence in e-payments or any of the things we do because of fraud. So banks have to be more attentive. Banks need to train to enlighten the public more. And they need to listen. Listen and listen to your customers. They have a 100% you know, uh, responsibility of keeping the monies of the customers, protecting it, and educating the customers in terms of what they need to do to avoid being defrauded. The Nigeria Deposit Insurance Corporation, NDIC, disclosed that the total amount resulting from bank fraud and forgery cases in 2019 and 2020 stood at 204 billion naira and 120.79 billion naira, respectively. This is not a sustainable situation. I think that we as practitioners too, we have not prosecuted the few fraudsters that we have been able to apprehend to the, to the last because the cost of prosecution for us sometimes could be too too high compared to what you are really trying to protect in terms of time that you have to dedicate to it. That is why from CB 
we decided to engage all the people, all the stakeholders um, that are involved in crime combating in Nigeria, combating of crime in Nigeria, uh, so that together we can all work, we can work together to combat this common enemy, fraud. Whenever we have meetings and we share our perspectives on fraud vectors and topologies, whatever we get from them, we pass it on to our operators here for them to also see, you know, the other side of what is happening in other countries. And I think with that kind of international collaboration, we'll be able to sanitize, you know, our industries and get rid of all those cyber criminals. There are several variants of these fraudulent activities. According to Financial Institutions Training Center, FITC, the most prevalent fraud types include and are definitely not limited to computer and web fraud, mobile banking fraud, ATM frauds. Banking fraud also includes everything from accounting fraud, bill discounting fraud, the fictitious bank inspector, payment card fraud, phishing or internet fraud, and prime bank fraud. Others are the bank transfer scam, investment scam, the remote access scam, the email or text scam, the romance scam, and on and on. The list keeps growing yearly. The real issue, according to bank customers, is that many times, getting back lost funds may be as difficult as trying to get a camel through the eye of a needle. But money moved into your account from your account. Why you meet the bank sometimes? You say there is no, nothing they can do about it. My brother, uh, banking sector to me, is very very bad porous i personally have lost confidence in our bank because now if i if i if, if they dupe me if someone dupe me of maybe about millions and i go and report to the bank they will tell you are not, they, are, they, are, they are less consigned they will tell you it's not their own fault so that's why instead of me keeping my money in the bank i have a big safe where i store my money but now it's not because of this uh, that Naira, Naira redesign that I'm bringing it back to the bank. But my brother, after that, I'll take it back because I have lost total confidence in our bank. There's one of my friends, my close friend, he mistakenly transfer 1.2 million Naira into his colleague, another colleague that can't, who the person reside in Holland. So, and the person is, does now call the bank to please reverse the money to the to the to the mass account, which they refuse. Even do a video call, text message, send email, up to now they have not refused the money. The problems are numerous. The challenges are naughty. What most of them uh, do is they don't have those experts within their organizations. So when it happens, they try to shift the blame. They could either tell you, oh, it's the bandwidth provider that is right. No, you have to secure the content in your server. You know, so, and that should be part of the prerequisite. It's not just sufficient to have a solution that the consumers can use. You've developed an app, you've developed a business model. What of the back end? Somebody have to secure it within your team. So if they are not ready to do that, the only solution is to formally outsource it to a company that you now know is 100% responsible for your infrastructure. The fight against electronic fraud is a fight that must be won. I also think that you know banks and all the you know, uh, service providers, you know, just need to tighten the controls a bit. Combating of crime is not limited to banks because um, it's not limited to banks, fintechs, and uh, people that actually bring out the situation um, solutions. We need crime combating agents in Nigeria to be part of this. We need the telecommunications, which is one of the key tools that um, the crime. Uh, the first that's used for combating this crime. Stakeholders in the payments ecosystem must be ready to actively collaborate. The power of synergy helps us to achieve more um, because when we come together 
as a very formidable and unifying force, um, we have a louder voice. So it's a lot of collaboration that's required from all the stakeholders. Together. But if CBN comes in and mandates all the stakeholders to pull information into the center where everybody can work with, all the stakeholders can work with and track these uh, fraud perpetrators, that's, who, that's who when we we'll begin to see um, real action take place. And that's where CB is driving us. CB is advocating for a central fraud system, a national fraud system that will um, that will co coordinate all the activities, coordinate the um, the activities of all the agencies and the banks to track down uh, fraudsters. Mm -hmm.